Slew. Hello, everyone. Good morning, evening, or afternoon. It depends on where you are. Uh, today we are gathering in a wonderful metaverse, celebrating the launch of Octopus Mainnet together. As you may have known, we choose today as the birthday of Octopus Network because October 8th is World Octopus Day. If you are familiar with octopuses, which have a high degree of intelligence and learning ability, you may have asked this question like me. Why didn't octopuses build civilization? The answer is simple. Octopuses like sociality. Octopuses' parents died around their birth. They don't know their sibling and have no friends. Although they have a strong curiosity and can acquire amazing skills by learning, octopuses live their lives alone. I feel sorry for octopuses, but feel lucky as human being. Human beings' success is due to their sociality. We, in short, we collaborate. The development process of civilization is no other than the evolutionary process of collaboration. Today, crypto protocols built on blockchain technology have opened the gate to a new era of collaboration. That is, internet users are not restricted by region, race, nationality, or even language. Skipping internet platforms and traditional, traditional middlemen, transacting and interacting with each other directly. As the coordinator of transactions and the interactions, the crypto protocols are not committed to maximizing the extraction, but commit to return as many as the economic value created by transactions and interaction as possible to the protocol participants. In order to restrict crypto protocols from being controlled and abused by individuals or minorities, becoming new tools for rent seeking. We encode, its, uh, we encode economic rules, namely the distribution principle of right and the interest on distributed ledgers, blockchains. Then so-called decentralization is to be owned by the community, resistant to control by a small group of people no matter how rich resource, wealth, or computation power they have. But I want to remind everyone that blockchain technology itself cannot resist centralization. It's only by the feasibility for communities to do that. Only in the condition that the community actively and continuously maintain decentralization can the crypto protocol stay away from the, op from the opposite end? This brings up a more basic question. What is a community? In my opinion, a community is an institution formed spontaneously for a common goal. As long as you agree with the goal of the community or even part of it, participants in some form and help to realize the goal, you are a member of the community. The goal of the Oxford Network community is to build an appropriate Web3 app infrastructure and incubate hundreds, if not thousands, of Web3 applications in form of blockchain, which we call AppChain for short. If you buy OCT token just for short-term profit, you do not care about the goal of the Octopus Network, then I'm here to make it clear you are not considered a member of the Octopus Network community. As the co-founders, we design a basic path to achieve that goal. 
the core team members gathered for this goal and pass, and then investors, action teams, validators, ambassadors, and people participants in various way. There is also the co-founder of Near Protocol, Ilya, and many others from the Near team, which play a key role in the birth of Octopus Network. I'm grateful for all these people. I believe that the strength of the community is much is much stronger than the strength of individuals or teams, and the wisdom of the community is much higher. So I urge everyone here, stay active. If you happen to be a developer, why not why not create a great Web3 application with your friends? Octopus Network Accelerator will help you realize your dream. Even if you are not a developer, you still have tons of ways to stay active. Speak out your thoughts and suggestions. Participants in testing. Find out some Web3 application teams and tell them that Octopus Network is their best stage. Actively do voting, staking, and validation for Octopus actions. Become a user of the action that you feel interesting and help the team. I seriously promise you, Octopus Network itself will become a crypto protocol that belong to the community. Today is the birthday of Octopus Network, also the starting point of the process of decentralization. Octopus Network will take about three years to gradually realize comprehensive on-chain governance, hand over the right of resource allocation, executive staff appointment, and the protocol upgrade to the community. Let us become octopuses with sociality and become a part of the new human civilization based on community-owned crypto protocols. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lewis. So for those of you who don't know, Lewis entered the crypto space in early 2013 and has been recognized as an important uh, key speaker uh, in the, or sorry, key opinion leader in the uh, crypto in the blockchain space in China ever since. Uh, he's also a senior researcher in the field of blockchain technology, Web 3.0, token economics, and the crypto asset markets. Uh, so thank you again, Louis. And next, I'd like to introduce uh, Jean-Daniel Gauthier, CEO of Myriad Social. He's an avid video game industry observer and game design enthusiast. He has 20 odd years of experience in IT and seven years of navigating in the blockchain ecosystem as an entrepreneur. A voxel creator in his free time, he's a No Man's Sky player who also enjoys Robocraft and Torbash. Make sure to ask him for his Steam ID. Ladies and gentlemen, John Daniel. Hi everyone. So um, hope you're enjoying the party. The servers are a bit crowded uh, tonight. If uh, you want to um, get in the guest book, the box is on the All right, so here we go. I'm here to uh, talk to you about Myriad. Our uh, tagline is, it's, it's your turn to own the web and uh, you're gonna understand why. So basically, uh, what is Myriad? Well, if you look at it from uh, an abstract perspective, we are a Web3 social platform on the top of uh, Web2 content services. In practice, it means that we are using uh, decentralized technologies, uh, blockchain for NFT and cryptocurrencies. And it means that on Myriad or of Myriad, 
you can own your content. And it also means that users can send tips to each other, but also send tips to content that is outside of Myriad. So uh, we have a pretty decent team. Uh, did I say decent? I want to say amazing. Uh, most amazing part being here, this is Gilang Bagaskara. He's been a leader in the blockchain industry for uh, several years in Indonesia. Um, he's entered more official building than a diplomat. <laughs> and um, uh, he's developed a ton of, of cool stuff for private and, and public sector. Uh, here is Barton Johnston, uh, an, old, an old friend of mine too. He developed a blockchain on his own because, well, that's... Uh, what he did, and that's pretty impressive too. And you have Boldface here, that would be me, uh, along with a ton of advisors for uh, UI, UX, media, uh, IT, and a lot of um, tangential, but also uh, cogent uh, topics. So what is actually the problem with, with today's, today's social media? Well, the problem is uh, they are called social, but they are owned by only a handful of corporations. And for something that's used by now, I think it's more than 3 billion people, uh, those people, the users, they can't decide much about uh, what they can do on, on those platforms and uh, how can they advertise or monetize their content. So uh, what we're offering uh, is to change that uh, what we're proposing initially is first a way to uh, turn your profile and content into NFTs, um, to um, to tip, of course, uh, user on Myriad and users outside of Myriad, and to also um, dynamically. Uh, share collections instead of using uh, content content discovery algorithms. I'm going to tell you more about this in uh, in a little while. So let me show you in details what those features imply. Uh, you have a uh, first sovereign real time importing of any other uh, social media platform from any other social media platform like Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, and that's without leaving me yet. Uh, there is a user set custom algorithm uh, that now put the customer in charge of their data, uh, of the data stream. And we have this cross-platform token tipping. Uh, I just mentioned that allows myriad users to send tokens to content provider on any other platform. Uh, what's important is we do this without using mainstream single sign-on cookies or uh, permission APIs. So instead we use a permissionless account confirmation technology and with this, you can remain uh, pri private and in control. Uh, basically you share a code on your mainstream social media timeline and uh, Mira detects this. Uh, the verification of account ownership that enables something else, uh, safe NFT minting uh, of past communities and even your own personal dynamic NFTs are of, of your mainstream uh, and, and Web3 cloud. You can even mint your own ad space uh, for advertisers to monetize peer-to-peer. Uh, so uh, the key here is that users uh, are no longer held hostage by what the network um, operator intends. Uh, they have their own incentive uh, and see network operators and users have different incentives. Uh, what we want is to uh, empower the creators to get what they need to get. Um, so. Uh, instead of one network operator, we have a federation of network operators. So there will always be uh, someone, who, uh, for instance, respects your speech. Uh, and users, they have tools out of the box to choose how their experience is organized uh, in a way that cuts out common channels a uh, network operator would typically use to influence what uh, users see. That means you can use social media the way you want, uh, not the way they want. So the way those big network operators execute their influence is usually not by preventing someone from posting, not outright. Uh, the larger and more insidious way they do it is by using content discovery algorithms to filter what you see, you know, to put the stuff they want to see on the top uh, to make sure uh, that you don't see the stuff they don't like. In Myriad, 
Any user can create what we call an experience, which uh, can be configured transparently uh, with any algorithm needed to distill the feed into something a user can actually consume. So whether an experience shows all the posts in chronological order or only a subset of the posts filtered uh, or ordered by some criteria, the user can see exactly what uh, the algorithm is doing and they can decide whether they want to follow that experience or another one or create their own. Uh, we uh, developed an ID for decentralized advertising uh, that features an incentive triangle. So you've got advertisers who are uh, willing to pay to get their ad seen. You've got experienced creators who are configuring a feed that users are subscribed to. And between them, you've got a thing called an ad space uh, and a user who maintains it. So experience creator, they choose which ad space they want to roll into their experience to make sure their experience remains high quality for the subscribed, uh, subscribed users. Advertisers uh, compete to get their ad into ad space, which are placed in the most valuable and uh, highly subscribed experience. And the guy maintaining an ad space uh, has to balance the quality of his space uh, to preserve his placement uh, in the valuable experience and the money he's willing to take from advertiser to list stuff in there. So these three actors, they find a balance with each other in triangle that stabilizes the quality and placement of ads. Uh, but um, what is maximally appreciated by users. Uh, this is also an opt-in feature, by the way. Uh, there are going to be uh, several ways to get Miria token. So you can get some by tipping important content, but uh, but of course, when you run a, a node or a server, and there are also going to be uh, several ways to spend those tokens. Uh, mostly uh, to begin with, you're going to have to spend them by minting ad spaces, but uh, there, is, there is a couple of surprise because we are developing a... Um, we are developing a metaverse and uh, something tells me that uh, Myriad tokens can be uh, staked somewhere to get something from that metaverse. And uh, we are also developing a chat and uh, Myriad tokens might very well also be used for that. So in the end, what we want to build is a user-owned uh, and DAO-steered platform. Uh, so while the first line... Uh, of defense against the mismatch incentive that arise between network operators and normal users is a federation of public operated mirrored servers uh, and individual DAO controlled communities. There must be necessarily still a global direction uh, and development strategy for the entire Myriad platform. So that second line of defense against centralized control in the later phases of the Myriad platform is, of course, a DAO, which uh, allows users to directly own and control the global properties of the network and steer the funding and direction of uh, future development of the platform. And this is why we're saying that it's your turn to own the web. Not only you control how you use it, you control what you see, but you control the platform uh, on its own. Uh, we have um, given a lot of brain time to what keep the user in, and I invite you to uh, go to myriad.social to download our deck and take a deeper look at this, um, because uh, the network effect activation is very interesting. It uh, actually introduces, <coughs> uh, bless you, on uh, everything quality. So it, it there needs to be quality content to be tipped. There is to be uh, quality streams to have ads. There is to be quality ads to have views and um, that, that that wheel of quality actually brings a lot of defensibility to uh, to the network but it also adds quite a lot of value um, because well quality wise uh, it's fine but we also have a lot of um, I'm gonna say a, a, a lot of uh, customizability that that helps create the platform and that helps uh, circulating uh, circulating that value. Everybody gets something from somewhere. Uh, I also uh, invite you to uh, take a look at the deck if you want a, um, a more profound understanding. Uh, I'm at <laughs> I'm at ten minutes now, so I'm I'm gonna uh, go a little bit faster on on uh, what's remaining. But let's just say that we're gonna scale in this way. Uh, we are 
uh, decentralized when it comes to everything transaction and NFTs. Uh, so everything stays secure and probable, and uh, we are federated when everything uh, comes to content. So basically, you can host your own version of Myriad, uh, connect it on or to the global Myriad network, and, and make it your own and customize it by uh, adding or creating modules on the top of it. So both you and your users have the experience you exactly want. So... Uh, that's going to be it. But uh, before, I want to let you know where we are at. Uh, we want to we want to get federated by uh, January uh, 2022. Um, and actually, right now, you can already tip, right? And aggregated social are coming soon. This is uh, part of our next push. Uh, something else I absolutely need to tell you uh, before leaving the stage is that uh, Myriad is not just Myriad. Myriad wants to be a user-owned ecosystem and not just a social platform. So uh, we're preparing uh, we're preparing a, a, a 2D verse, uh, a metaverse, which will be accessible with uh, with Myriad. Uh, with Myriad identity. And when you have NFTs on Myriad, you'll be able to transport them into that metaverse. It's going to be two ways. And same for the chat. We're, uh, we're developing a chat where, uh, for instance, your chat history is going to be portable from Myriad to the metaverse to the chat application itself uh, with a lot of other uh, very nice QL features and, uh, and fun surprises. Um, and uh, I think this is this is uh, where I should stop because it's already 13 minutes. I hope you enjoy the presentation. Uh, if there is any question, I'm going to take them as soon as uh, I stop sharing the screen. Awesome. Thank you very much, Danny. So next, I want to introduce Ibnu Gamal Al-Hadid, Chief Science Officer of Debio Network. Ibnu is a biologist focusing on bacterial genomic. He's a workout junkie who is also a certified personal trainer, and he loves to cook and arrange flowers in his spare time. Ibnu, take it away. Thank you, Adam. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the party. I hope you're enjoying it. And without further ado, I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to present the bio. All right. I hope everyone can see the screen that I'm sharing now. Okay, let me start. Okay. Uh, as presented earlier, my name is Ibnu. I'm the chief scientist of the Centralized Bio Network. We're the first uh, chain for medical bioinformatics services and data that is. Uh, uh, prioritizing anonymous in our service. So if we, the buyer, could uh, you know, address that problem and uh, change that into opportunities, we're going to win big. So here are the objectives. Uh, we want to democratize the direct customer genetic and biomedical testing. We also would like to empower labs of all sizes. So not only the bigger labs, but also the smaller labs could own a storefront in uh, our art chain. We also want to be the first home biomedical testing that, uh, 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 you know, uh, value your privacy. We also want to build a private company data marketplace as well in Ocean Data Marketplace. So how do we do it? Uh, the client can log on to our app chain and then uh, the client could opt for the genetic testing or biomedical testing that they want. And then they pay with cryptocurrency. After they pay the service, they could sample themselves and then they would then put the biomedical, the biological samples into an envelope, and then all 
the clients do is to put to write down a specimen number. It's almost similar to a uh, Swiss bank account. So you don't have to put your name. You don't have to put your address. So no ID at all, only the specimen number. After you write down your specimen number, you can send the sample to the labs that you chose that is nearby to uh, your uh, residency. After the, rep, after the lab received the sample, the lab would then uh, do some uh, quality control and then would do some analysis on it. And after, the, uh, after they finish the analysis, they would then uh, encrypt the result and store it in RPFS. And only the users could decrypt the uh, result from that genetic testing or that biomedical test. After that, the bio would then uh, offer the client to be, uh, to be able to uh, stake, not to stake, uh, to give, to aggregate the data sets in the ocean data marketplace to be, uh, quote unquote, to be a, a, a cell, you know, so that uh, any researcher or uh, pharma, uh, biopharma companies could use the aggregate data set for the, their research to develop, let's say, new drugs or new vaccines. Okay, so we are going to have a lot of data tokens. Uh, uh, it all depends on the uh, categories that we have. Let's say we, the, the clients uh, just did a, a whole genome sequencing and then uh, the client agrees to uh, give their consent so that their data could be aggregated with uh, other clients' uh, whole genome sequencing uh, uh, test result. So that test result, whole genome sequencing test result, will be gathered into one data tokens. Let's say uh, we call that data tokens gene. Yeah, and then we have many others uh, that many other data tokens in the marketplace. So any uh, scientist or researcher or uh, pharmacogenomic companies that want to uh, do some uh, research on the data set could buy uh, access to that data set by buying oceans. So after that, uh, after they uh, purchase the uh, ocean, that ocean will be owned by the bio. Those ocean tokens will then be swapped to Ethereum. That Ethereum then will be uh, used to buy back the bios. Okay. Yes, from the user side, uh, we value their privacy. They're always uh, uh, anonymous, but not with the lab side. Lab side, uh, uh, lab that wants to join the, the bio ecosystem needs to be attested with Kilt. So here's the uh, privacy company that, uh, that I uh, tried to explain earlier. This is the uh, simplified version. Okay, the bio will then aggregate the result in our site before we uh, connect them into the uh, computer data proxy. Okay, customers, the data consumers that want to execute uh, a research on the aggregated data set could buy the ERC data tokens and then they uh, then propose an algorithm to our consortium, uh, Dogenics Limited, then run as Kubernetes cluster. Uh, we're going to uh, do some uh, algorithm. Uh, we're going to uh, run the algorithm onto the algorithm set. The result of the uh, computing will then be delivered to the data consumers without ever, uh, without the data consumers uh, able to see uh, the data. So this is the economic flywheel analysis. of our focus on welfare of artists that we pursued you know further collaborations to sponsor and support um, physical artists uh, and events you know especially those that you know we can help to um, elevate from uh, marginalized areas or empower those who are struggling so 
uh, in this one short year, uh, we have had the opportunity to sponsor and support collaborations with um, the Black Love Mural Festival, IRL Art, Black Love Art and Crypto, and the uh, End Games Association and the Cyber Panther Party, which uh, is in the US, in America, and also um, the NFT Art Support Right Yet COVID 19 Relief Campaign uh, for artists and communities in Malaysia. And um, so, going the natural progression of that, we've now developed um, our own philanthropic startup, which is called Unique One Love. Um, which we've internally bootstrapped, currently active to empower individuals in both Indonesia and Malaysia, with goals to expand globally as well. Um, so launching a purely decentralized venture alone hasn't been a small task, um, but launching one that's of a philanthropic venture is of another level altogether. Um, but we have not turned away from um, challenges and we're taking it uh, head on and further developing and, and see what, uh, you know, how we can be, you know, a force of uh, goodwill uh, in, in this world. So in, an, in the same spirit, um, we are excited to expand by building our mothership chain, uh, which we are calling it Unique One Network NFT Galaxy um, on Substrate as well uh, on the app chain on the Octopus Network. Um, so as a Substrate based next gen uh, NFT uh, app chain, uh, our Network NFT Galaxy aims to leverage Web 3.0 interoperability to augment um, the NFT evolution. So we believe that NFT tech will eventually become ubiquitous and a standard feature across many mainstream industries such as uh, tech, financial, legal, to music, entertainment, marketing, and of course, the arts. So extending from our multi-chain marketplace, um, our Galaxy protocol is developing um, modular builds for B2B uh, marketplaces by offering a variety of NFT as a service modules um, to end franchise Web3 teams with the support, community, and NFT network effects that they need to scale with flexible startup options that eliminate, eliminate financial risk um, and by staking our UNET tokens, which will be our native token for Unique One Network. So our multi-chain marketplace will not... Um, only fully uh, will not only fully support mega auction and fundraising uh, with auction mechanisms, but also fully support philanthropic and charitable fundraising for Unique One Love. Um, we foresee a future where teams, projects, companies, you know, would require NFT marketplaces to complement their product and their marketing strategies. So by bootstrapping an NFT marketplace. Uh, is, is a very labor intensive and capital intensive um, attempt. So um, what we've initiated is to come up with a Galaxy Marketplace launch pod, um, where we can provide NFT marketplaces with uh, out of the box team options, infrastructure and support. Any protocol team or businesses can launch their own NFT marketplace without the financial risk um, by staking our unit. Uh, native tokens. Um, we will also have our collectibles launch pod, uh, services, which is, uh, you know, Web3 teams uh, and platforms that wish to launch their own collection of collectible NFTs and uh, we'll be giving the support uh, uh, to them and so they will, will cut down their um, responsibilities and they can focus on, on their project uh, with partnering, uh, by partnering with us. So our collective our collectible launch pod allows uh, these protocols to um, launch their, you know, their memes, characters, or any other collectibles such as generative NFTs like BAYC, CryptoPunks, and some new ones like Gangster Geckos. Um, and it gives them the ease without having to host their, their product or learn how to use um, algorithmic uh, generators. So by staking UNET tokens, protocols can start earning revenue immediately with minimal capital. Um, our blockchain gaming launchpad uh, has full NFT capabilities to create games integrating NFT collectible characters and rarity traits. NFT creators can launch their games as well to create uh, to create use case and network effects either for their marketing purposes alone or as a part of more comprehensive package, including metaverse um, and new farming integration options. Um, we also would have this uh, IPLO or Initial Protocol Launch Pod offering um, in our proprietary service uh, offered to add marketing, community, and auction support to teams who wish to release their utility and governance tokens to their community via unlockable avenues. 
um, attached to NFT sales and auction events. IPOs are popular crowdfunding events um, that can be customized to each individual uh, protocol uh, depending on their goals. Um, and so projects uh, that choose to hold IPOs on Uni1 Network um, gain the advantage of the network effects uh, of our Galaxy communities by being listed on the upcoming calendar uh, of community events and buoyed by the marketing funnel um, to our entire uh, Uni1 network, um, Octopus network and near protocol uh, communities as well. Um, so we've got an exciting new feature uh, that we've recently incorporated by partnership and collaboration uh, with something called realitychain.io. Uh, Reality Chain is a multi-chain, multi-engine uh, metaverse as a service protocol. And uh, it's the recent um, near Meta Builder Hackathon winner as well. Um, and this is part of the launch pod. So Unique One Entity Galaxy will uh, now offer a novel means uh, for protocols, groups, and retail investors to secure Metaverse lands um, in a flexible and scalable manner via an exciting and innovative staking mechanism for Metaverse land leases. So uh, all of our services will be supported by our native token um, unit. Uh, unit will be for collateral staking, um, new farming mechanisms to unlock a variety of services on Unique One Network. Um, as well as offer opportunity for retail investors uh, and protocol launches to you know spin up marketing pools and so on. So staking and yield farming will also continually be developed as additional protocols uh, may seek more complex services to launch and scale the platforms and communities. Um, in addition, our integration with uh, our DeFi satellite, uh, which will be called Unique One Finance. Um, would unleash opportunities in NFT fractionaliz fractionalization and tokenization uh, of DeFi intensive uh, in incentives for staking. New farming, NFT fractionalization, creative staking, and vault opportunities will continue, uh, continually be developed. So um, I hope that I've given all of you uh, a glimpse of the exciting features that we are building uh, on what we like to call our mothership chain. Um, or AKA app chain on the Octopus Network. So we truly are thrilled to be part of the Octopus Network ecosystem and uh, near protocol uh, and the collection of communities and more communities that you're gonna uh, see uh, sprout. Uh, it's gonna be an incredible year and uh, Unique One Network uh, NFT Galaxy is uh, very excited, very stoked to be part of it all. So um, I think that's all I have to share as an introduction. Uh, feel free to check out our social links um, to get to know us better and what we do. Uh, if you're part of projects, um, you'd like to partner up, collaborate, uh, please reach out to us. We'll be more than willing um, to chat with you. Um, back to you, Adam. Awesome. Thank you very much. So I'd like to introduce our next speaker, Alex Score. Alex is the CEO and founder of DEIP, the Creator Economy Protocol. Alex Score is an expert in blockchain architectures and crypto economy modeling. For more than 10 years of experience in designing distributed systems, he's held executive positions at multiple successful blockchain and IT companies, including six years as CTO and head of our uh, R&D department. Hey guys, do, do you hear me well? Yep, I can hear you just fine. Take it away, Alex. Yeah, so hi everyone. My name is Alex. Uh, uh, thank you for the introduction. I'm I'm CEO and co-founder of DAP Network, and uh, we've been building it all for already four years. Uh, and really happy to be here. Like, uh, thank you for invite, uh, Louis. I'm really happy that we met at some point, and uh, I, I'm really I'm really glad that we have such a good connection with Near Ecosystem as well, that they made this introduction. Maybe we will not find you if not them. So, yeah, and uh, really appreciate all the help coming from Sasha Goodzilin. Uh, yeah, so just like a, a couple of notes, but uh, now coming to what we are building, it's basically in decentralized protocol, decentralized infrastructure, multi-chain for uh, the future of, of the greater economy and basically for the decentralized greater economy. Let me share my deck. Uh, where is it? Uh, 
Do, do you see my screen? Oh, uh, one second. Uh, there's something. Share the screen. Sorry, there's something. Okay, now. Uh, one second. Uh, something. Adam, um, I think he got disconnected. No, I'm still here. Sorry, no, he got disconnected. Uh, he, he's connecting again. Alex? Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. Awesome. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, do you see my screen now? Yes. Okay, so let me open uh, the deck. Okay, cool. So, to with a mission to create an infrastructure for collective intelligence systems. So, uh, yeah. So, um, what is our mission? Our mission is not only to create the infrastructure for creator economy and boost liquidity of the assets of creator economy. We also uh, envision ourselves as a company which will help to bridge real world assets, intangible assets, uh, any intangible economy with the perspective in mind that the creator in the center and capital strives to achieve the creators. The capital is fighting for creators, the capital is fighting for assets creator uh, makes. So this is basically the the world is already shifting to this creator economy you can see it like you notice it anywhere like in on twitter there's so many buzz already created about creator economy and we are so lucky for uh, being in this industry and basically being on the edge of two the most powerful and the most hyped industries in the world web3 and the creator economy so and like why it's happening uh actually even now it's already, there is like so many signs. So for example, in S&P 100, 90% of all the value of all these companies, 500 companies, the most valuable companies in the, in the world, like in the United States, 90% uh, of all their assets are already intangible. So they are already career economy assets. And it's like, uh, it's an astonishing number. It's an astonishing percentage. And just like, uh, just like, how many years so it's like <laughs> let me calculate so it was uh 46 years ago it just was 17 percent so you can see how dramatic change we already uh, had like and still undergoing and, and like we believe that in the future all the resource will become commodities except intellectual and human capital so therefore like this is a resource we need to focus on these are assets we need to focus on and creator economy is the industry we need to focus on so but imagine what it will lead to imagine the world when the world creator economy is operating on a decentralized infrastructure when all the assets of creator economy NFT and uh, in and, and or and FNFT NFTs uh, is on top of 
NFT, it's basically fractionalization of NFTs. And this is like a crucial pillar because this is actually what brings these assets on chain. We, When we tokenize them, we bring them on chain and now we can operate with these assets. And the tokenization process also includes legal binding. So if there is IP, it can be binded to this NFT and governed by NFT uh, or like smart contracts or some uh, voting on the network. Also DAO, when it comes to DAO, when we have all these assets on chain, now we can pull these assets into the basket and basically govern all the operations with these assets on chain. Is it licensing, transfer of the assets, trading of this exchange, investment in these assets, all this can be governed on chain. But the last pillar is actually the most important one. It's about liquidity. What they think is about how to increase liquidity of these assets. And that's actually like very cool because we have in DeFi space already a lot of tools, a lot of protocols to increase liquidity and stabilize some assets, but mostly for the crypto. But we can apply all the same, all the same techniques, all the same protocols, all the same tools to unlock liquidity of greater economy assets. So you can imagine, for example, how some university which is sitting on multi hundred dollar portfolio of ip assets will be able to tokenize these assets and put them on a chain and unlock liquidity of these assets yeah so uh basically this is i already covered how nft works we basically uh will tell you uh you, you can read on our website uh and also yeah something about dynamic liquidity protocol so we call it also a decentralized bank for creators. So it's something like MakerDAO, but for instead of cryptocurrency as a collateral, we use stable coins or we, we use uh, tokenized intangibles, basically NFTs as a collateral. And uh, and this can work for any industry. So it can be decentralized bank for creators in movie scripts industry, decentralized bank for creators in music and so on. And it's available as a protocol without any middleman. Also a very cool feature of our protocol is yield farming. So you basically can stake your DIP tokens to, to bet on specific industries. If you, if you believe, for example, that uh, movie scripts industry will out outperform uh, music industry, you can bet on it and you will be earning all the, uh, you will be earning as a yield part of all the transaction, all the financial transactions in this industry. So if there is like licensing transaction happened, the part of this transaction goes to the yield farmers and a part of this goes to the ecosystem fund. So in, if, if you're the only one yield farmer in this space, you basically get all the rewards. Uh, and you can go even deeper. You can stake not only on uh, uh, high level industry, you can also stake on this segment of this industry. So for example, in the movie scripts, you can stake on, on genres. In invention space, you can stake on, on like specific disciplines, like uh, uh, is it like biofarm, for example, or like AI, whatever you want, like any technologies. You can stake on any technologies in industries. Uh, okay, so this is like, uh, yeah, this is about portals. So very important part of our protocol, we don't, we think that there's, it, it's, uh, there's, no chance that there will be just one single platform for tokenization of anything, all the greater economy assets. We think it's like, it's, it's a bad idea, it will not work. And that's why we decided, so we need to create a specific entity, specific role in the protocol for the, their uh, portal, which specializes on specific industry. So for example, each portal can work either for uh, for movie scripts industry, for inventions, for technology of human capital, and so on. And this creates like incentives for them to develop like their portal specifically adjusted for their industry. And, and with this approach, we, we can also enable established players to become portal operators and basically earn also some fees. So basically they can come become uh, a like a self sufficient business. So they can uh, earn money basically uh, for transferring assets from Web2 to Web3, transferring assets from real world to Web3. They are kind of this gateway is this, in this like universe, from this universe to metaverse, to Web3 metaverse. So yeah, the IP token, it's, uh, it's a crucial part of our protocol. So basically it's used for governance, for staking, for also for throughput allocation. So it's also used to 
uh, for some infrastructural parts, like for example, through throughput allocations, our model of free transactions, some transactions are totally free in our network, but in order to get like more throughput, more bandwidth in the block, you need to stake DIP tokens and basically you increase a number of free transactions you can do per day or per like per some uh, period. Uh, so, but what also we realized and it's, I think, like very important uh, problem in general in World Web3 space that it's still very hard to get adoption for your protocol. In Web3, we're still like very early and still very hard to, for others to build on top of your protocol. And we, specifically for us, it because we are targeting creators who are not like tech people. We want them to become portal operators. That's why like for us, it's even harder. And we realized, okay, we need to come up with some uh, more smart idea, more comprehensive idea on how to tackle this problem, how to tackle the adoption problem of our protocol. And we realized uh, that we need to take a look back of what did drive adoption of Web2 protocols. And surprisingly, one of the uh, biggest drivers of adoption of Web2 was WordPress. Because why WordPress? Because WordPress is a free open source constructor for Web2 protocol. So basically to build applications on, on top of Web2. And we realized, hey, it's not possible to build a constructor for any Web3 applications, but it's definitely possible to build constructor to just for just one protocol for us, for Web3 protocol for tokenization of creator economy assets. And we created such a constructor and we call it like, it's called Web3 constructor. Uh, Igor Tsarik is CEO of the constructor product. And uh, actually, like is, the name is Kazimir, and it will will be released soon. Stay tuned. So, and this is what does this constructor do? So, this constructor basically has two modes: it's no code and low code. You can see some highlights there, but uh, basically, it's uh, ability uh, with a no code mode. You can just drag and drop modules and create your portal uh, rather fast, like much faster, just from building from scratch. So it's basically like you can, and this portal is basically a NFT marketplace, you, investment portal NFT. You can all combine these modules and create a portal specifically for your industry. We aim that in future creation of the portal, like fully functional po portal with no code, with all the customization will take just one week. Now it takes a bit longer. And now actually low code mode is more advanced and works better. Uh, and it's more, more ready to use. And some portals already building with no code, low code mode. Uh, and But soon we will launch also the better of no code mode and some portals will be start building with no code mode. So we think this will be the biggest breakthrough for our network when no code mode will be ready. Yeah, and uh, the constructor is modular. There's like so many different modules we already have. There's just some of them. Maybe it's like not even 50%. I think of them what we have. So there's DAO, NFTs, assessment, marketplace, NFT marketplace. Basically, it's yes, it's it is market, NFT marketplace, yield farming, investments, smart contracts, and so on. And you can just like combine these modules. Now, low code mode already works, and like uh, you can uh, take a look on, in our GitHub. So you can also actually start building. There is not much documentation yet, but it will be fixed soon. And here are some portals. So now this is the coolest part. What is possible to build with this constructor? And actually it's pretty cool. Check this out. Like this is a portal for tokenization of human capital. It allows to tokenize human capital in form of income share agreements, tokenized income share agreements. So this is basically a network which will allow to unlock the whole power of education because it, because it will align incentives of, uh, of these uh, uh, of all the stakeholders. And this product already raised uh, a pre-seed round of half a million, and it's led by Julia Shinkevich. Uh, she's a product lead in, in this uh, portal, and we are co-founders of this portal. Uh, and uh, and this portal uh, will have their uh, the first bootcamp launched soon. So actually, Octopus uh, Network, uh, we invite you, like, and all the guys here to be a partner for this bootcamp it will be preparing web3 developers uh, and basically upgrading web2 developers to web3 developers and we will be teaching there ourselves i will be lecturing there 
uh, basically we need to bring more developers and this will be like this portal can accelerate this like uh, by a thousand times um, so this is like i think one of the coolest portals we have but the next one is an um, even maybe even more cooler in the long term uh, this is basically tokenization of inventions and you can tokenize patents and put them on chain and also use this as, as a collateral it's basically what i mentioned is use case and we already have like more than 10 universities signed for this they are ready they want it to be released they actually already operating in our private test net and they looking forward when we will be launching our canary network with octopus basically to have to start world economic model because as you understand in testnet world economy doesn't work we need to launch canary network to make this work uh, another one is basically it's a citizen science accelerator it's the organization of basic scientific research it doesn't have like that much commercial value but it's actually very cool because it allows to crowdsource uh, peer review and formalize this peer review and also allows to launch this open source uh, uh portals for scientific research like for free for any university so here's our team uh yeah that's me i'm ceo this is alexi colleague our chief architect alexi uh i know him for already 13 years we were working together in my previous company uh he's a brilliant architect and uh uh, and 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 he, he was head of uh, blockchain R&D department. We had like smaller, small blockchain R&D department in our previous company, but he was a head there. Igor Tsarek, our CTO, he was a tech leader. I know Igor for 17 years. Uh, Dr. Dmitry Sidorovich, our, our chairman of the board, but uh, he also our uh, uh, main enterprise sales guy. So he basically like kind of chief business development officer or like chief uh, financial officer. And he was uh, CTO of IT. Uh, he was CTO of Nokia Siemens Network globally. So he's like has more than twenty years experience in enterprise on public trade in public trading companies uh, and corporate innovation. So on. he also product director of technology transfer product. Uh, Nicolas Sisko, our chief marketing officer. He has like really wide experience working from like uh, uh, some. Uh, esports blockchain companies also some uh, 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 e-commerce companies so he's he really like uh, a brilliant uh, really brilliant mind when it comes to marketing and he really can grasp anything like even like whether it's a blockchain protocol or some uh, like real world product so yeah this is actually not uh, all the team members it's quite uh, not the latest deck so we have already 25 uh, team members so it's uh, on this deck is just 15 so we uh almost doubled by last four months and we want to double more so here is our roadmap um yeah you can take a look actually it's also on, on the website so but the main thing we are launching soon our ido it will be launched uh, uh on skyward finance uh this month so stay tuned so, you, so soon you will be able to participate um yeah so that's pretty much it so our vision is uh, to make this platform as a, a best way for creators to exchange uh, to uh, th their assets to reg to invest into creator economy assets and basically to boost liquidity discover this creator creator economy assets and boost their liquidity thank you for your attention thank you very much and uh, yeah so the last thing i wanted to say is uh, that we're looking forward to launch our uh, Canary Network with Octopus Relay Chain. Awesome. Thank you very much, Alex. It was a great presentation. Uh, next, we're going to have our next speaker, Faye Chung. Uh, Faye is the community director of Disco Vol. She's a new enthusiast of the crypto world. Uh, Disco Vol is a decentralized protocol for high quality content uh, community built on app chain. Take it away, Faith. Thanks for having me. Hi, everyone. My name is Faith. I'm community director of DiscWall. DiscWall is a decentralized protocol for high quality content community built on application-specific blockchain, a app chain. 
This goal aims to help people acquire practical information beyond their expertise. In this goal ecosystem, anyone who contributes either professional knowledge or traffic can get commensurate reward. The incentive mechanism is open and transparent by virtue of the blockchain inherent feature. Nothing is hid from public scrutiny. We believe that people will neither be limited by social media nor be subject to a quick algorithm. This quote action plan to launch on Octopus Network at end of this year. So today is an important day to all of us. Allow me give my heartfelt congratulations on Octopus Mainnet launch. Love you guys. Have fun. Thank you very much. All right, and finally we've got Kevin. Uh, this is Kevin Q, the dev and puzzle designer at Atocha. He has over 20 years experience in web and software development for a wide range of international clients. He's also an open source hardware evangelist, a hardcore fan of sci-fi, and he's the father of one boy with ADHD, like myself. All right, Kevin, take it away. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Ah, okay. Congratulations on Octopus Network's main night lunch. I'm Kev from Atota. Uh, among all the first batch of actions on Octopus Network, I think Atota is a little different from the others that we take entertainment and emotion way as uh, our point of entry to bring old fashioned puzzle lovers to the crypto world. Atota intend to create brand new and decentralized platform to host lots of user created puzzle games and use tokenomics to build economic incentives to those who are interested in this subject. We are now aiming uh, for launch our action in December this year. Hope we can have all you guys to enjoy some really good puzzles then. Uh, this day belongs to Octopus Networks. So I will stop bragging our project now. I want to thank all the people who work hard these days to make Octopus Networks launch a real success. It's really a huge thing in cryptocurrency industry. One giant cornerstone for Web3 infrastructure. And upon this infrastructure, we action developers can do something. Uh, this is uh, I can you see? Yeah. This is the uh, octopus mascot. Uh, with my scarf. Uh, maybe someone has viewed uh, my short video clip about this toy I tweeted yesterday. My son is uh, in that video too. He really liked this toy and already took this for his own and put on put it on his bed. For your information, octopus has eight tentacles and the number eight pronounced the same as fortune in Chinese. So I think this little fella is really a good sign for all of us. After we, uh, Atocha team joined the Octopus Network family, I have opportunities to meet people from all over the world. Uh, people from Indonesia, from Vietnam, from Japan, from India, from Europe and America. This is a really good thing, uh, especially during this pandemic. I think by embrace technologies like Octopus Network, the world can be healed and connect uh, tighter. If we work hard and with hand in hand together, we can introduce a better world for our sons and daughters. Okay, these are all I want to say in this event. Hope everyone have a wonderful party, but don't, but don't forget, tomorrow will be a brand new day with Octopus Network. Back to you, Doctor. Thank you very much. All righty. So that about concludes it here with our App Chain uh, candidates. I hope you guys learned as much as you possibly could from them and uh, hopefully have a better understanding of which App Chain you'll be voting for first in the App Chain process. Uh, so I thank you guys all for coming. 
Uh, if you guys want to stick around, we're going to have DJ Pondu taking over now so you guys can have a good time and hang out. And again, I hope everybody had a great time. I hope you all claimed your NFTs and we'll be seeing you again very soon.